this new episode of success stories of expat women they did it so can you my name is eva saunders and i'm an inspirational singer and songwriter and i'm also an empowerment coach helping expat women to thrive professionally after they move abroad because let us be honest it's not easy to leave behind all your social circle or what you knew um, sometimes your job and to jump into the unknown it can be pretty stressful and overwhelming and i am so grateful that danai accepted uh, to come to our success stories and to share their her story because she has quite a bit to say about the topic hi danai hello eva it's a pleasure to be here Okay. Thank you for having me. So you told me that you are not a real expat in Switzerland, but you have a large expat experience, which is what's the most important. Tell me, where are you from originally? Yes, it's actually a long story. Um, and I bring together a lot of different cultures. But if we define an expat as a person who comes from another country and works in a specific place for a certain um, period of time, it does not really apply to me. Uh, still, I have, like I myself, I was born elsewhere. I was born in Greece, in Athens, and I came here at the age of uh, three, and I grew up here mostly, but I soon left as a teenager still and lived in South America for five years. Wow. So I had a long uh, experience as an expat or immigrant, perhaps, in immigrant. South America. And then when I came back, I still traveled a lot and spent a lot of time out um, abroad. And then uh, when I was working at university, I actually spent a year as an expat with a Swiss contract at a foreign university in Germany. So that was a proper expat uh, experience when I was uh, working abroad, um, uh, but with actually with a Swiss contract. So yes, I have, and actually just to close this, then I came back again and where I live, I've always been in touch with a lot of expats and I have always worked uh, with many, many expats. So I feel like I'm an expat uh, or perhaps just a global citizen, whatever, however you want to see. This is what we become. And actually, uh, in my experience, when we live abroad, even going back to our country, it's not the same because we grow because we have this new experience because something else happened in between in the in the original country so it's like we are not at the same point and we need to learn to adapt you said that uh, you were born in greece are your parents greek yes my dad is actually greek okay. and he still lives in greece and as you say that when we then live in a different country then we sometimes feel like an expat when we go back this is precisely the case with me. I feel like when I go home and when I visit my dad, I feel like I'm coming home, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm not properly um, Greek in a way that I don't speak perfect Greek mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know all the things that I would like to know. Yeah. So it's, it, I do feel like I'm a bit of a stranger when I go home. Mm -hmm. I do have exactly the same feeling when I go to Czech Republic, so I can relate to this. Okay, you said that you remain in Switzerland uh, until your teenage years, and then you mm -hmm. went to South America. Was it like for your studies? Was it with your parents? What did you do there? It was an escape, to be honest. Okay. I, it was an escape because I felt like there was more to me than this. And uh, I felt like exploring uh, the world. So I went to uh, first to Bolivia, then to Brazil. And then again, I actually settled in Bolivia for quite a few years. So I um, went there with no contract, with no actually goal apart from just personal um, development, perhaps. I didn't have a plan. I honestly oh, didn't have a plan. How old were you? 
I was I was just after school, so it was like eighteen. <gasps> and um, and what about your exactly? Were, were they okay with it? What about your parents? Because we well, have... they did not really have a choice. <laughs> what is because your they were they were. <laughs> <laughs> And the thing is that they were, of course, open-minded enough. Well, they trusted me. They knew me. They had raised me to become an independent uh, person. Okay. So that was also the way I had been raised. And uh, of course, they were a bit worried. They were like, okay, why South America? Why alone? And also like the places where I was going in those times, there were no like, uh, there was no internet in most places there. Okay. So and they were worried. Yes. But then again, they also said, OK, we've taught you what you had to learn about being independent and now go and uh, find your way, find your path. So they were open uh, for me to do this. But of course, it was also worrying for them. That's amazing that they were supportive at that time. So what happened when you came there? What did you do? I first worked with um, a couple of biologists, actually. That was my only plan. I had applied for... Um, something like an internship okay. as a volunteer with uh, the World Wildlife Fund. And oh. that was also the re reason why I went to Bolivia. I did not choose Bolivia, but it was Bolivia that chose me okay. because I uh, sent applications to different countries. Mm -hmm. And then the Bolivian team was the team that responded and said, yes, of course, come. So I went there and I spent two months in a lagoon with a bunch of biologists that were studying uh, the behavior of, of birds. So it was a really enriching experience and it was really in the middle of nowhere. So uh, I had to use my scouting skills to actually um, to get through there. It was, it was a great time. I had a great time. Could you, could you speak Spanish at the time? Yes, I, had, I, I was actually already fluent in Spanish because I uh, had um, grown up in Switzerland among um, immigrants, because I, I uh, as a Catholic, I went to um, to all the schools that uh, kind of taught children to like for the communion and all, and all these things. And most of the kids there were either Italian or Spanish speaking. Mm -hmm. So I had picked up Spanish as a child and then I had it in high school. Okay. So I was fluent in Spanish when I went there. But I have to say that I spoke European Spanish. And then when I got there, people would laugh at me with my they they thought it was really old fashioned how I spoke. So I quickly had to adjust my way of speaking Spanish. Mm. <laughs> so how was this expat experience at a very young age of 18? You could speak mm -hmm. language, which is already uh, like a plus something that helps. Yeah. But how was it for you? How did you deal with maybe feeling far from your family or from your friends? How was it for you? Uh, to be honest, it was uh, liberating in many ways for okay. me because uh, in my case, it was that I had kind of I had this uh, need or this this drive or this perhaps desire. I think it was a desire to really explore the world and get out of the perhaps what I felt like chains yes. um, in my uh, society, my city, uh, because I was always someone's someone's person. I was either someone's daughter or someone's sister or someone's friend yes. or someone's yes. uh, team player or just a classmate or something. I found that at, at the age of 18, I found that very uh, limiting to a certain extent. So I felt like I want to just be myself. You and so I really enjoyed free. this. You needed freedom. to break, yes. free, break free from the condition, exactly. conditioning, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was on the one hand, of course, it was this like, uh, when you come to this place and there's no way of speaking uh, like to your family every day or to your friends every day, because there's no connection. A phone call was extremely expensive still at the time. Yeah. Uh, so it was, um, for me, it was um, like, it was also liberating, but of course, then there's also this uh, worry, like it's a, it's a risk, but I didn't really focus on the risk. I'm good at uh, like focusing on what I want to focus on. So um, yeah, it was a, it was That's a quality. good experience. That's a huge quality just to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm good at actually blinding out of, like when it's necessary, mm -hmm. then I try to really focus on what I, I have to focus on. So I really uh, enjoyed this this freedom to a certain extent. But I was also very young, so I had no responsibilities whatsoever. I, uh, I knew that I had, I, I was young, I still had time to choose my path and I just wanted to know where my path, path was taking me. So I enjoyed the freedom. And so what happened next? I, well, I spent two months in Bolivia and that one was, that part of the 
trip or the ex experience was planned. And another part that had been planned was uh, that I, after this experience, I went to Brazil. So for, directly from Bolivia, I went to Brazil. Mm -hmm. And there I was planning to work also as a volunteer with a foundation in Southern Brazil. But then things happened, some, a couple of things happened that I uh, really uh, didn't uh, enjoy. And so I decided I wanted to, to kind of go back into a place that, where I was more comfortable. So I decided to go back to Bolivia after six months. Okay. And so I went back to Bolivia and then I found an opportunity for me to work there for a while. And I just said, okay, I'll try. And I, um, I, I had met nice people and, and I felt comfortable in the community. And I found a job as a language teacher mm -hmm. and translator. And so I said, why not? Let's stay here and work and try how things it's, work. It's, it's such a young, uh, young <laughs> yes. it's amazing. Yes. A language teacher, which language did you teach at that time? I started by teaching um, English at um, um, a local language school, okay. um, which I enjoyed. And I also taught, I had like a couple of private lessons um, in German, but I soon realized that it was actually for me more financially rewarding to teach Spanish to foreigners oh, wow. because foreigners were willing to pay a higher price. So I um, actually taught uh, three languages. I taught uh, English and German to locals and I taught Spanish to foreigners. So that wow. um, what, do, gave me- What, what is your um, mother tongue? German? Well, yes, I would say, well, I was, the time when I was raised in Switzerland, I spoke mostly Swiss German, but I have to say that uh, already at home, I became fluent in English. Yeah. Near native speaker of English. Uh, so English was always around. And then also this, like Spanish just came along with, as I grew up. So um, it had, I have always been multilingual. Yeah. Greek, I must say, I had uh, spoken as a small child, as a toddler, and then um, it faded. So today my Greek is really the language of a three-year-old, I have to say. What could be interesting? <laughs> what could, uh, that's amazing, all these languages, I love it. <laughs> you are a lot, really like a modern global citizen, you know? <laughs> yes, <laughs> because it's that's exactly how I feel. To learn languages, to have uh, an international experience. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the earth becomes a global village, and that's exactly you. <laughs> yeah. What exactly. could be interesting I've... for for our audience is how did you go about finding this teaching job in Bolivia when you left Brazil? Well, on the one hand, the um, I had people who would ask me because I was, of course, I also had contacts with a couple of foreigners, mm -hmm. and I had contact with locals, and then when there was someone who wanted to learn English, for instance, they would ask me. So that was kind of like this snowball system, perhaps, or whatever, like a friend of a friend. Yeah. Um, but also, I have to say that I was actually looking for a formal job. Mm -hmm. So I applied uh, for a, a, a salesperson job at a language school okay. because I thought I could do this uh, because they were actually uh, they wanted someone who had international experience. So I thought, well, I'll try. And then I started uh, at this school and my plan was to sell these language courses. But I did this for three for three full months. And I didn't sell one single course. Okay. Because I'm honestly not really a good salesperson for okay. something that is not really my thing. Okay. So I realized this is not going to work out. But at the same time, of course, I had been in touch with the language school and they wanted to hire me as a teacher. So then at the same institution, I started um, mm. teaching after three months. And then um, also because while I was selling the courses people would ask me to teach them and they didn't want to, to buy the courses at the school but they wanted me to teach them so I was like okay I'll just teach languages What's and um so yeah and then also um I actually just being in touch with a couple of foreigners who were doing a uh, volu voluntary work I also started working as a translator so I translated yeah. uh, documents for um a human rights organization so I just it was just like living there things there you know at the time there were really very few uh uh, foreigners. I was in La Paz, and very few foreigners lived in La Paz at the time. So uh, people, when when like if you're a foreigner there, even if you blend in as I did, 
people still know that you have skills and then they will come and ask. Yeah, okay. So it was, it was really, uh, they, I didn't need any social media, which uh, I didn't have at the time. Things just uh, came naturally. Uh, what I love is that like, it's kind of intelligence of life of how, however we call it, brought you where you needed to be. You started somewhere, it didn't really work. And very naturally, it just uh, directed you to, okay, teaching languages, translating. Yes. And, uh, exactly. And Actually, life taught, taught me what I could do with my skills to make a living mm -hmm. from it. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So what, what happened next when you, when you decided to leave Bolivia? What happened? Uh, well, then I came back. Uh, to Switzerland first, and I did not really want to come, but uh, my partner actually preferred uh, trying a life over here. So, but we still, well, we were living between two worlds. Uh, so I spent actually two months a year still in South America. Um, and during the time I was studying, so I came back and I started studying. Mm -hmm. I studied uh, languages and uh, anthropology, social, social anthropology, because the two just go together because I've like, they're also about the connection between cultures and how uh, different cultures actually mm -hmm. uh, work. So I studied, I did my bachelor's and master's at the University of Zurich. And then when I finished, um, it just things went so well because I, in my master's thesis, my professor told me that I should definitely uh, work on the Bolivian dialect. Okay. And then things went well, and then I got, um, an offer for a PhD. So I said, okay, I'll do a PhD as well. So I just continued. Also here, I I'm not the planning person, as you notice, I just went with life. And I, so when I uh, get like an opportunity, it's also kind of, be it's also important to just, when you see, or when you get an offer, then, um, then be courageous and try. So I did my PhD as well here. And then, yes, after, um, my PhD, I was still working here at the university. And that's also when I then decided to uh, apply for a scholarship, a grant um, to go to Germany. Mm -hmm. And that was like my, what I would call a real expat experience because then I was actually a fully trained person with a professional title. And I went elsewhere to do, uh, to work for, for an institution um, with, with a black, with my after, becoming a professional so that was a different experience than when I moved from Switzerland to uh, to Germany yes yeah, also because I went actually to northern Germany which is extremely different from Switzerland and it felt like the culture shock was actually bigger uh, between uh, than when I moved to Germany than when I went to South America that's interesting which city was it Bremen Bremen okay I see I see yeah Okay. It's close to Hamburg, so it, they, Hamburg. Bremen say that it's like a suburb, um, that um, um, Hamburg is a suburb of Bremen. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So what was, what was different or hard when you came to, to this northern part of Germany? The thing with my German experience was that um, I had not expected the cultural difference to be considerable. I was not prepared for this because I, I, I'm very much used to finding other cultures. I'm good at uh, navigating very uh, international um, settings, but I was not expecting German culture to be so different in a way, because I really had to, and that was also interesting because I was of course also a native speaker of German, but then I had to learn anew how to use this language because mm. the conversation style is different. Um, the way you, you make a phone call is different. The way you ask questions is different. Yes. So I had to uh, relearn a couple of things that I had not expected because I had always been very, I had always moved very easily between cultures. And then suddenly I felt it difficult. I thought it was difficult to actually uh, interact. Yes. So the culture shock was quite big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can give you an example. I had like just the way um, phone calls, if you call a company and you're asking for a service, the way they ask you the questions to, to know what you want from them is totally different. Or when you go um, into a, a, a bakery, for instance, then you first, you have to start by telling them how many buns you will want to buy. So they know what, what size the bag has to be. So you have to be prepared to know these details because otherwise they will get annoyed. And okay. they get annoyed because you're a native speaker. 
So they expect you to know these rules, yes, these conventions. Mm -hmm. And so if you come there with a foreign accent, then they will just say, okay, you're a foreigner, no problem. Mm -hmm. But if you come there with no foreign accent, then and then you behave in a way as if you were a foreigner, then this is this is um, this has caused a couple of awkward or let's say funny situations. That's really interesting that this cultural um, gap is bigger yeah. in your perception when you go from Switzerland to Northern Germany and then when you go yeah. from Switzerland to Bolivia. And that's really, yeah. really, really interesting. Wow. Especially if the language is the same. Yeah, exactly. That, that the same language uh, was used so differently. Mm -hmm. Well, the same language Actually, from a linguistic perspective, we could say that Swiss German and High German are just two different languages because they're really not the same. Yeah. But still, um, it was interesting to see that the whole conversational conventions are so different. Yes, which is amazing because I do believe in contrib contributed and it helps you to be good at what you do today, which brings us to the question when you came back to Switzerland, what happened and what do you do today? Yes, I, I, I definitely use these skills now. I can understand expats very well. The thing is that I came back from Germany and I continued um, doing research for another um, two years mm -hmm. at university, but I felt like this was not my path because university, if I wanted to become a professor, for instance, that would mean that I had to leave the country again because you have to have your foreign experience and everything. Mm. And I had two little girls. And I had already dragged them to Germany. I had dragged them back. And I felt like, is this going to be it? That they're going to spend their childhood moving, moving from around, one place yeah. to the next. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, I will settle here. And um, so I quit my job at university. Um, and I tried, well, I have to say that then, then I struggled too, because that was for me like a whole new experience. I moved out of one industry into a whole new world. Even though I had always worked for, for private clients or corporate clients, it yeah. felt so different because I now became an employee of a, of a, corp a larger corporation. I struggled with the new job. I was working for um, a headhunting company. Mm -hmm. I did research for them, but it was, it was difficult. So I quit after a, job, after a year. I, and now I actually really have found my place because I understood that I can really use these skills that I have to support um, expats among other people. So I came back to, um, um, also I'm, I teach again, I'm a lecturer at the, at the local university, but only part-time. And uh, I, like my passion is to help all sorts of people um, in their struggle, when they struggle with communic say communicative struggles yeah. as a linguist. Mm -hmm. So I work, for instance, a lot with expats and I help them with cultural and communicative challenges in Switzerland, mm -hmm. because I know what it feels like when you move to another place. Yeah. And I also I have seen different places and I can, I can understand what the culture shock must feel like. So, so I, support, um, I support expats and, and also companies, for instance, international companies that have a, a very international team and mm -hmm. they might have uh, challenges in their intercultural communication. So I support them in how to communicate and how to understand each other. I, I'm like a mediator to a certain extent, a cultural mediator and linguistic mediator. That's so amazing. today I do these two things. I, I teach at university, that's about communication. Um, uh, and then I also um, support and coach and oh, as a consultant, of course, as well, I um, advise clients. Yes. This part of like uh, helping people to communicate in very international uh, companies mm -hmm. is really interesting. So you you have your linguistic background, your your international experience, and for the rest, did you did you study? Did you take some training or class? Uh, because you say that you are kind of mediator, or yeah. is it like something natural that you learned by just serving others. How did you go about this? Um, it, it, it has to do with my training at university. Mm -hmm. So I, um, and I have like, I have this practical experience, which I think is actually the most valuable of all my training. But of course I have also the, the proper solid academic training. I had, uh, I studied uh, linguistics 
-hmm. But uh, in, in, at the beginning, I actually st studied l uh, linguistics and literature of Spanish and English. So I had like the whole cultural bouquet to put it like this. And then I, in my in my PhD, I I also had like two uh, disciplines that I combined, which was linguistics and anthropology. So I have like this solid kind of scientific background. Uh, I know all the concepts and all the the, the debates as well around uh, the the um, this this uh, the the contact between people. I published widely on on language contact. What what happens, for instance, when people from different linguistic backgrounds when they come together, how will they speak the other language? So I understand these processes, also the cognitive processes, mm -hmm. and that's why I just bring this all this scientific background into my practical experience and these two together are they make a smashing team i think <laughs> absolutely and definitely your experience in northern germany <laughs> like yes that living, comes with it exactly living, living it in your bo own bones yes living how it is that when you are not understood when people look at you look at you a bit oh what is she doing it is not this way we should do it. it's another way i think this is really very helpful too uh, because you can really feel in your skin what, yeah. they, what they live and just exactly me, the first step is really empathy and uh, and and like meeting people at the level they are and you can meet yeah. them exactly at the level they are because this is what you went through too and yeah i'd also I, just to add in germany what of course came with it was my experience with my children with my daughters in school they struggled um, in school at the beginning, the little one, because she didn't speak any high German. Yeah. She, she understood Swiss German, but she didn't uh, speak high German. So she was mute for a whole month. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bigger one, she was totally fluent in German, but she just, the, the, the whole teaching culture is different in Germany. Yeah. So while I myself, I could, kind of, I could blend in after all. Well, I had experience in international settings, but for them, the struggle was bigger. Yeah. Also, because they were exposed, of course, much more to German culture than I was, because I was working with internationals, with expats there as well. My team was from Finland, from the US, from Italy, mm -hmm. but my kids were in the local school, so they really struggled. And also, I sometimes struggled with the teachers. So that was also something that has um, opened my horizon, because... Um, yeah, when you're an expat somewhere, you're not only yourself sometimes, but you actually bring the whole family. Absolutely. And for them, it's like each individual of the family, each member of the family has their own experience. And as the mother, you feel responsible. So that's a struggle that is yes. real. And you ask how they will adjust, how they mm -hmm. are doing in adjusting. Absolutely. It's, yeah, that's a very interesting point. It's not only you, but it's the whole tribe, the whole family, the whole tribe, exactly. And, and of course, as a mother, you want the best for them. So it's always all oh, what's going on for them. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what can you let us say uh, there are expert women in our audience? How can you help them if they are struggling? How can you help them? Well, about the um, about the kids or about themselves? Themselves. About themselves. It depends a bit on on the, the type of person um, they are. Like myself, I was a person who really enjoyed this freedom. Yeah. Um, so if you're just alone, then I would really just say embrace it. Embrace it, embrace the time on your own, embrace this uh, human, the contact with human that are different, that make that kind of, uh, everything boils down to this, this humanity that we have. So you, you find people that are so different. And so I, I would just, we could recommend them to try to embrace it and to mm. try to experience instead of feeling afraid or feeling uncomfortable in yes. in these uh in these settings in which uh, they find new people that they don't know and perhaps don't understand mm -hmm. i would recommend them to try to open up and just embrace this experience mm. uh, with the kids it is also a different uh, it's a different um, experience but i would here really recommend them to relax and to trust the kids just as I uh, said that they should try to embrace their experience and also kind of trust their guts, yes. they should try to do the same with the kids. Mm -hmm. it, will be, it, it will be fine. And the less they push, the more the kids will be able to find their own um, oh. path in this new culture. So because the kids are not the same as the mother or the father. They have their own way of dealing 
with the situation and they have a, an old their own way of they, they have a known um like their experience is different they have a, their own teacher or they have their class they have perhaps their hobbies but their experience is totally different from the mother's or the father's experience mm. so let this happen and trust them and support them in their in their uh, in their way of of adjusting and don't try to guide them too much wow. because they are actually kids are really when it comes to socializing or to adjusting to a new setting they're experts at this kids are good at learning how to find their place in, in the world they, are adaptable. they were born to do this they yeah are, so it is important so that parents trust totally. their kids yeah, yeah yeah i love when you say trust them they are not you they they have their own way of adapting of exploring of of, of adjusting yeah. and trust the process don't push them it's so yeah. so so true because if you trust them they will trust themselves Exactly. If, if you try true. to influence them too much, to control too much, they just will lose all the all the inner confidence, and they will yeah. feel, feel lost. So trust them, support them by trusting them. Yes. To your I definitely, I advocate this. Yes. Wow. Uh, is there any place where people can learn about what your about your offerings or, or whatever if they need some cultural adjustment or if they need some boost in international communication? Yes, of course. I'm always um, open. I um, have a, I have a website, and I am on social media, LinkedIn. So um, it's Amazing. easy to so find we, me. I will and put the links uh, about this uh, video, and yes. if anyone feels like, oh, this is exactly what I need, they can find you and get in touch with you. Wonderful. Wow, um, Danai, Danai, thank you very much for sharing your story, for sharing uh, your experience. Uh, it's a pleasure for me. I f I feel connected to a global citizen. I'm yes, and I <laughs> I do hope that we can cooperate. Um, Absolutely, the if there is an opportunity, I will be very happy to support you to create something together in order to support uh, expat people uh, and to show yes. them you can thrive even abroad, and it's not a burden. It can be actually a huge treasure that you can embrace. And in my experience, I always found like new parts of myself abroad like by this difference i discovered different pieces of myself yes. which is so rich you yes, will never be true. again if you are able to embrace all these parts new parts that you discover by changing culture changing language changing country uh dan i i wish you a lot of joy in what you do and i'm looking forward to meeting you in person in person <laughs> yes of course <laughs> You are it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, that's my pleasure. You're listening to Success Stories of Expat Women. I'm Eva Saunders. I am an empowerment coach helping women to thrive professionally, but not only because it's really connected to all your life <laughs> after your move abroad. If you feel lost, if it's hard right now, don't remain alone. Don't blame yourself. Don't feel ashamed. That's a part of game. Come, reach to me. I offer you 45 minutes clarity session for free. You will just empty out, share with me your story, where you are, and we will determine your next steps so you can get out of this unpleasant place and you can start to create thriving life. Remember, you were born to thrive.